We've already talked about factoring trinomials, which remember are polynomials that include three terms. So remember tri means three, so trinomial means a polynomial with three terms. You can see here we've got two examples of trinomials, they each have three terms. We've already talked about how to factor something like this, but only when there's no coefficient on this x squared term. The coefficient, remember, is the value that sits right in front of the x squared or the x variable. So the coefficient on x here would be 16. The coefficient on x squared here is 6. The coefficient on x here is 10. So that's that coefficient number. And we haven't dealt with trinomials where we have a coefficient on our x squared term other than 1. We've always just had x squared plus these other factors here. So what do we do when we have a coefficient on the x squared? Well, we do the same thing we did before when we didn't have the coefficient. It just gets a little bit more complicated because we have to pay attention to the factors of three here, as well as the factors of five. So if we look at the factors of three, we know we're either gonna have three and one, or one and three, essentially the same thing. And for five, the only factors of five are five and one, or one and five. So now we have to figure out which products we can add together to get this middle number of 16. So we're always gonna factor still into these two binomial terms here. And because we have three x squared, and we know that the factors are three and one, no matter what order, we can say three x and one x, or just x. And that should make sense because if we multiply these back together, 3x times x gives us 3x squared, which is what we started with. So we have our factors of 3 and 1, but how can we get to 16? Well, we know that our factors of 3 are going to be 3 and 1, no matter what the order. So we've got 3 and 1 here, and we know our factors of 5 are going to be 5 and 1, no matter what the order. So it could be the opposite order, but we know we're going to have a 3 and a 1, and we know we're going to have a 5 and a 1. So how do we get to 16? Well, what we're going to do is multiply the 3 by the 5, because that will give us 15, and then we're going to multiply the 1 by the 1, and that'll give us 1. And when we add those together, 15 plus 1 is going to give us 16, which is the middle number that we have here that we need to get to. So we know we need to put the 3 and the 5 together because we have to make this 15, which means that our 5 has to go here. Because if we put the 5 in this spot instead, we would never get it multiplied by this 3x. So we have to put it here so that when we FOIL, we have outer times outer, 3 times 5 gives us 15. So we have to put the 5 there, which means the 1 has to go here, so plus 1. And if we multiply this back out, if we FOIL it, remember we're going to do first, and then outer, and then inner, and then last, like this, when we FOIL. When we do that, we're going to get 3x times x gives us 3x squared. We're going to get 3x times 5, which gives us 15x. We're going to get 1 times x, which is 1x, or just x. And we're going to get 1 times 5, which gives us 5. And now when we add like terms, the 15x and the 1x go together to give us 16 x and we get plus 5 and you can see we're back to our original trinomial so we know that we did our factoring correctly here. Now let's look at another example. Here we have 6x squared plus 10x plus 4 and there's actually three ways that we can go about factoring this trinomial. So the first thing we want to do is write out our factors. So we have 6 here. The factors of 6 are going to be 6 and 1 or 1 and 6 and 3 and 2 or 2 and 3 so 3 and 2 but either way a 6 and a 1 or a 3 and a 2 are going to be the factors of 6. Our factors of 4 are going to be 4 and 1 or 2 and 2 and they could be in either order but we're either going to have a 4 and a 1 or a 2 and a 2. So how are we going to combine these factors to get to our number 10 in the middle? Well if we take 6 and 1 and 4 and 1, if we multiply 6 by 4 and 1 times 1, we're going to have 24 and 1 and there's no way that 24 and 1 are going to get us to 10. But if we do the 6 with the 1 and the 1 with the 4, we'll have 6 and 4 and that could possibly get us to 10. So we could do here the 6 with the 1, and we could do the 1 with the 4, and that would possibly get us to 10. What about here 6 and 1 with 2 and 2? Well, if we did 6 with 2, we'd get 12, and 1 with 2, we'd get 2. So we'd have 12 and 2, but we'd have to do 12 minus 2. One of them would have to be negative, and the other would have to be positive, and we know that that can't be the case because we have here a positive 4, and because this is a positive, we know our signs have to be the same. So we can't have a positive and a negative, so there's no combination there that'll work. What if we look at the 3 and 2 and the 4 and 1? Well, here, if we did the 3 with the 4, we'd get 12, 
And if we did the two with the one, we'd get two. 12 and two, we can get to 10, but we'd have to have positive 12 and negative two, which again would be different signs. And we can't have that because we have this plus four. So we know our signs have to be the same. So that's not gonna work. But what now if we do three and two with two and two? Well, in this case, if we do three with two here, we get six. And then if we do two with two, we'll get four. Six and four, we know will get us to 10. We can add both of those together. So that's a possibility as well. Well, let's look at our first combination here where we do the six and the one together and the one and the four together. In that case, we have the six and the one. So we're gonna have six X and we're gonna have X. In other words, six X and one X. We know we have to put the six with the one, so we're gonna say plus one. And we know we have to put the one with the four, so we're gonna say plus four. Now, if we multiply this back out, what we get here is six x squared plus six x plus four x plus four. And if we combine like terms, we get six x squared plus 10 x plus four, which is back to our original problem, so we know we factored correctly. But what if we look at the other set, the three and two and the two and two? Well, in that case, we take our factors of six, so we have three x and we have two x, and then we pair them together with two and two. So because they're the same, we don't have to worry about the order, two and two. And if we multiply back out, three x times two x gives us six x squared, three x times two gives us a positive six x, two times two x gives us a positive four x, and two times two gives us a positive four. We combine like terms and we get six x squared, plus 10x plus four, which is back to our original problem. So this is another correct way to factor the trinomial. The other way we can think about it, remember we said that there were three ways to factor it, is if we look at this original problem, six x squared plus 10x plus four, we notice that there's a common factor of two. We could pull out a common factor of two and we would get three x squared plus five x plus two remaining when we remove that two, when we factor the two out in front. And then we would need to look at the factors of three here, which would be three and one, and the factors of two here, which would be two and one. And we would be looking to get to this number five here in the middle. In that case, if we put the three with the one and the one with the two, we have three and two, we add them together, we get five. So what we'd have here is we'd factor this like so. We have our factors of three, three and one, so we get three x and one X or just three X and X. And then we wanna put three with the one, so we'd say plus one. And we wanna put the one with the two, so we'd say plus two. And if we multiply this back out, we'll get back to our original problem. And you can see that this is true because if we compare this answer to the first answer we got, we have this X plus one factor here. We have an X plus one factor here. And then we just have three X plus two with a two factored out. And if we look at this six X plus four here, we could factor a two out of that and get two times three X plus two, which is the same value that we have down here. So we've essentially factored it the same way. We just pulled out the two at the beginning.